done for this in shop part two. CAD done for this in shop part two. Right, so now we are gonna jump right over to manufacture. Now, this was our first setup. That was where we did all that, okay? Now, our setup is gonna be identical on this go round. You know, we want our X pointing out this way because if we had our part sitting too low in our vise, then the end mill would hit it here. All right, obviously we don't want that. So we're going to shoot that out to the left or to the right. All right, so looking at the machine, this would be an acceptable setup. And this would be an acceptable setup. Now, I'm not saying you couldn't do it to the to the back like uh, not saying you couldn't do it to the back like that or like this, but you would just make sure that you had your part set up high enough so that you didn't uh, run into it with an end mill, obviously. Um, but we're gonna start with a brand new setup. Um, you know, creating setups, that's something that you that you guys need to be able to do just kind of second nature. Um, but we're going to go in here and we are going to duplicate this setup. OK, now, once you've got one good setup, then, you know, there, there's really no need to go through all that work again. All right. Now, what we are going to do is I'm going to change this to in shop one we're going to change this to hold up on slow double click this one and in shop two now we're going to go in here and edit this one and just make sure that everything is still good all right now you know course my my zero we still want that in the center no if you wanted that somewhere else you know like let's say that you that you wanted that on the uh on the back corner or you know on where wherever you wanted it that you know that's fine all right now um i'm gonna i'm gonna tell you guys that it's gonna be better to put this in the center but that that's personal opinion okay no if if we were looking at a print and we had a part that had to be dimensioned off of a certain feature, then then it would you know every it would have to be that way. But on this part right here, uh, it doesn't matter. All right, so just the the moral of this story is put it wherever you want it. Just remember when you actually produce this part, remember where you set your offsets. Okay. Um, now let's say that you wanted to flip this. You know, let's say that you wanted that cut out to be on the left and not the right. However you want to do it, doesn't matter. Okay? My stock, all that stuff's still good. Our block is four by four. I don't know your thickness, okay? But thickness doesn't really matter. I'm gonna change this. I'm just gonna do go four, four, five, six. Change this to in, sh in shop part two, Mac 150, and okay. Right? So I'm going to minimize that one now. You see how this one is active, this one is inactive? I'm going to activate that. And I'll also silence my phone. All right, so now this one's active. So now we can go in here and make our changes. We can do whatever we want to do. All right now, first things first, now that we have our setup done, I'm going to go in here, going to go new operation, drilling, drill. I'm going to select a new tool. Or are we? There we go. All right, so I want to click on the project over here. 
to add new tool. I'm gonna go spot drill. And just gonna say 250 spot. My cutter, spot drill, the two flute. And ours are 120 degrees. And all this stuff is good. We don't need to change any of that, but our cutting data, we do need to change that. Uh, being that this is aluminum, I'm going to say, you know, probably somewhere in the 300 surface feet range. Feed per tooth. That is going to be. Um, you know, let's just call that four. Uh, no, let's call that two. We want to go about four thou per rev, but that's asking per tooth. Now, this one down here, vertical feed rates, because this is how we're going to actually be using this tool. So even though we filled this out, none of this really matters, the way we're using this tool. So I'm going to set this to four. All right, this is feed per revolution. And I want you to notice that this is the same, even though I did feed per tooth, two thou, feed per rev, four thou, because this is a two fluke cutter. All right, most drill feed rates are gonna be in feed per revolution. And here we're just gonna say 250 spot and accept. All right, now, if you wanted to, you could go ahead and do your, your drill and your tap. I'll tell you what, let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to go drill. This is going to be a 201 drill, which is a number seven. Two flutes. 118 degree and all this other information um, yeah it would be great to fill it out but I don't have the tools in front of me so we're just going to leave it like it is we're not going that deep so it doesn't really matter at this point now for this one I'm going to say about 250 surface feet feed per rev I would go about four Okay, and accept. We have one more to do, and that's going to be the tap, right hand tap. That's going to be a quarter 20 cutting tap. All right, flutes don't really matter at this point. It's going to be. 250 in diameter and my thread pitch is going to be one divided by 20 All right, because they quarter 20 tap All right now for this um th this is a conversation that needs to be had in um machine shop but for this I'm going to, well, I'll tell you what, let's, let's just do it like this. If I wanted my spindle speed to be 20 RPM, no, we're not, we're not talking surface feed right now. We're talking RPM. Then if my, if my tool was going to rotate 20 times per minute, I would need to advance it one inch per minute because it is 20 TPI, 20 threads per inch. OK, now the machine is going to do that calculation for me. So it's going to say, OK, 20 RPM. We know that his pitch is 0.050. So 
we know we're going to feed at one inch a minute. All right, 20 RPM is going to be incredibly slow. So if we multiply that by 10 and go 200, then it's going to output our feed rate as 10 inches a minute. Okay. If we did this, it would be 20 inches a minute, 30 inches a minute, 40 inches a minute, so on and so forth. All right. For me, I like 400 RPM. It seems to uh, to make you know pretty good chips, and and it seems to keep everybody happy. It's going to feed at 20 inches a minute there. Okay, so we're going to say quarter 20 cutting tap and accept. And now we're going to select that spot drill because if you remember when we first came over here, we were looking for a spot drill. We kind of just got sidetracked a little bit and made the other tools. So spot drill, select. All right, it filled all that out for me. Great. Okay, my whole faces, I'm going to select here. And I'm going to select same diameter. Okay. Now, if I didn't have same diameter selected, I would just have to grab each and every one of them, which is fine. It's just a little bit cleaner to do it like this. Right, and again, that's kind of that, that intuitive software, right? So for heights, all this right here. So my clearance height, and if I remember correctly, if you hover over one of these, yeah. So this gives you the, the layout of all of them. All right, and I'm not going to sit here and read all these to you, but I would encourage you to hover over this and spend 45 seconds of your life reading this because it is really, really good information that you're going to need to know. Right? So in my experience, from here, like the, these top four are almost always pretty efficient. All right, now if I've got a job that I'm going to be running 10,000 of them, then, then I would want to fine tune some of these numbers and make them a little more efficient. All right, but if you're making onesie, twosie prototype, you know, sort of stuff, then these top four are good. You're not going to save much time by changing them. But this one, this bottom height, so what it's doing right now is it's trying to spot drill all the way to the bottom of my model. All right? Obviously, that's not what we want. So I'm going to change this to now a couple, couple ways you can do this. You can either go model top or stock top because if you remember in our setup, we didn't put any extra material on the top. All right? Um, so those in this particular setup mean the same thing. Not in every setup, but a lot of them. Hole top. All right, again, same. Whoops, changed the wrong one. I don't remember what that one's supposed to be. Probably feed height. Nope. Crap. Shouldn't have said that on video. I'm going to go selection and click here. That'll make it happy. All right. Tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to start that over. New operation, 2D milling. I'm sorry, drilling, drill. Select my tool. All right. Look at my face. Same diameter. All that good stuff. Here. I'm going to go whole top. And then we're going to go. 50 thousandths. 
See, it gives you a little little heads up display here. Let's see what that looks like. Pretty good. And cycle, drilling, just wrap it out. That's fine. And if you hover over this, it gives you a really good explanation. So if we just do drilling, uh, looks like that is up there somewhere. So let me drag that down. Nope, not going to let me see it. So drilling is basically going to be G81, right, to where it's, it's simply going to go to the depth and come back out. It's not going to peck. It's not going to dwell. It's not going to do any of that. It's just going to go to the depth and come right back out. For spot drills, that's fine. Tell you what, these other two, just going to shift click those and delete them. So we got our spot drill. And just going to run it on graphics here. Change this to tool. That did nothing. That did nothing either. All right, but you can see we spotted the holes. So now we're going to go in here, create derived operation. Drilling, drill, and all I did was right-clicked, create derived operation. Now, going to select our drill. Right. It, it has already got all this information from the last one where we derived it from this one. Except now, our bottom height is going to be uh, model bottom. And then we're gonna go an additional 125,000, something like that. Just to clear it all up, all right? So everybody's is going to be different because I don't know the the height of your model or of your actual material and all that good stuff. Okay. All right. So for this one, we're going to do deep drilling with a full retract, which is going to output a G7, I'm sorry, G83. Our pecking depth, that's going to be 0 0.201 divided by 3. And then, okay. All right. So let's run this on graphics or simulation rather. All right, so we got our holes spotted and drilled. So now we just need to tap them. So you guessed it. Right click, create derived operation, drilling, drill. Except now we are going with the tap. All right now all that is has already pre-selected except here for the model bottom now i'm going to tell you guys if if you have a, a, an uncut piece so if you have a piece of material that is one inch thick right and i say an uncut because when we give them to students in mac 122 and 123 uh, they are uncut they are one inch thick four by four um, now, if you try to tap all the way through one inch of aluminum with the taps that we have at the school, I, I don't know how well that's going to work out. All right, you, you may bust a tap, um, you, you may tear something up. So what I normally do is if I have to tap more than, 
you know, say three times the diameter of the tap, then I'll, I'll tap it about that depth and then I'll hand tap it the rest of the way. Now, if we were on bigger machines that had, you know, uh, more torque and all that good stuff, then I would say that, um, that, you know, go ahead and tap it all the way to whatever depth you wanted. But the machines that we have to school don't have a whole lot of torque. So, you know, will a quarter 20 tap in aluminum stall the machines out? I don't think so. But it's sometimes it's better to just play it safe. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to offset it by about an eighth inch. Okay. So that it's not going to tap all the way through, but it's going to get the hole started. Okay. It's going to get it started really, really straight, really, really true. And then you can just come back and hand tap it the rest of the way through. All right. Not saying that's the ideal way of doing it, but that that is a way of doing it. Um, you ask any machinist that's broke a tap off in a part, um, you know, we, we tend to be conservative. All right. So our cycle for this one is going to be right tapping. And I don't do a dwell. I don't really see the value in it for tapping. All right. And then, okay. Now, one thing that I want to show y'all just right off the bat is when you run this on graphics, it's going to look like a crash. And if you're curious, if you click on statistics, that gives you your runtime. All right. So, I'm going to turn off my model. I'm going to go to comparison, and that's going to be red. All right, because it, it doesn't have the capability to see the threads being cut. All right, so it, it basically thinks that you're just driving a cutter down in that hole that's a quarter inch in diameter. So obviously it's oversized. So don't let that fool you. That, that's not a problem. That's just a, a software deal. Okay? Right? So now that we've got that, all we got to do is just this contour here. So I'm going to right-click, new operation, 2D milling, and we're going to do a contour. Now, we could do... A 2D adaptive clear. We could do a pocket. We could do a lot of different things, but the contour is probably the most universal tool um, that that Fusion has. So we click on that. We're gonna grab our tool. We're just gonna use that same three eighths in mill, and then select. All this should still be good. All right, now again, we're being very, very conservative with all these feed rates um, because this is the first time, I mean, this is going to be the second job y'all are running on with CAD CAM. So we want to play to the conservative side. We're going to go over to geometry. We need to tell it what we want to cut. So I'm going to just come down here and select that bottom. Now, you don't have to select that bottom. If you want to, you can, uh, let's see here, I'm going to have to turn off, uh, let's see, what is it trying to do here, not wrap, so it's going to be, tr it's, gonna, it's trying to grab the entire outside, and you can go in and delete stuff and get rid of all that, but say what, let's just play it safe right now and just click that bottom. Okay, that's the contour we want to cut. All right, now it's asking us what is our bottom height. So when we selected that contour, we told it where we wanted our bottom. 
we can also do it this way. It didn't look like it picked that up for some reason. But that is our depth. So you set the profile on this screen and you set the depth on this screen. Now, a lot of times you can set the depth by just clicking that contour. Okay, this time it didn't, it didn't do it for some reason. Right? Now, inside of here, I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about this, just trying to keep these videos a little bit shorter, but you can go through and look at all these. You can hover over it, look at it, and you can just play around with them. Just, just change something, see what happens. And I would strongly encourage you to do that. I, the, I'm going to hit the most important ones, though. So compensation type. If you're doing something that um, you're going to be cutting with regrind end mills, then I would encourage you to set this to in control so that you can go out there and you can type in your cutter diameter and you're good. Okay. Now, most commonly, if you're in, in shops that use own size cutters, they do in computer a lot. Right, and that, that's if you're working to relatively loose tolerances. But if you're if you're using in computer, it doesn't give you a G41 or a G42 code. Right, it doesn't use comp. It just goes in and cuts it. All right. The bad thing about this is you have no control. Right, you have if your part comes in big, you have to either manually program it or you have to come back to CAD back to CAM and fix it. But if you have in control, then you have ultimate control over it, okay? But just for now, to keep it simple, we're going to go in computer, right? We're not going to do multiple finish passes. We're not going to do repeat finish pass. But we are going to do roughing passes. Minimize that. So our maximum step over, I'm just going to set that to 0.1. And for step overs, we'll just set that to 3. We're going to do some stock to leave. We're going to leave 10 radially and 10 axially. And then all this, that's just the lead in stuff. And for something as simple as this, we don't need the lead in. But well, we don't need to change anything on the lead in, rather. Right? So you can see what it's doing here. So let's let's run, tell you what, let's run just this on graphics. Huh. And process stock is missing. See if I get that same alarm here. Nope. And our runtime is now two minutes. All right, so you see it's coming in, taking bites. Let's slow it down a little bit. So it's taking a couple roughing passes. Okay. Now, let me see if I can show you on comparison. All right, so I still have some material here and on the deck. So I have some on the walls and on the deck. Get out of comparison. Right. So this one was uh, was pretty, you know, this one's going to get the bulk of the material out, I should say. Now we need to go in and finish it. So I'm going to right click. Create derived operation. 2D milling, 2D contour. We're going to leave all this the same for now. All that's good. 
all this is good, except here, we're gonna go get rid of roughing passes, get rid of stock to leave, and we're gonna do repeat finish pass. So it's gonna take one pass, then it's gonna do a, a flex pass. So it's gonna take two cuts. The second one shouldn't cut anything, but we all know it will. And all that's good. So let's see what this one's gonna look like. Just like that. Okay, so let's do a comparison. Looks like we're good. Okay, so if I was to run these two together, And we should have a good part other than the holes. Obviously, they're still showing red. Okay. So, that's it. That's uh, that's this one uh, done. The only thing I left to do is uh, just, just rename these. I'm just going to say spot four locations. So finish shelf, no comp, where we're not using cutter comp, just to keep it simple. All right, so from here, we would just right click, post process. All right, it remembered all this. And going to turn off preload tool, make sure you're on Haas pre next gen. So turn off preload tool. Leave that on G53. Use G187, yes. Sequence numbers, no. And all that's pretty good. So then you would simply post and then save that file wherever. You know, put it on your flash drive, put it on your computer, whatever. All right. Now, uh, for this assignment in Mac 150, we're going to have you uh, upload your code for this, and then we are going to have you save this model with your name in, in your in your instructor's folder. Okay, and that that's how how you're going to be graded here. And I uh, hope this was helpful. And uh, good luck.